a reason you are better than all the other nations because he gave you the Bible. I'm going to say that again. God says you are better than all the other nations because he only gave you his word. Let's see how important God's word is. Let's get Baruch chapter 3. Because some people look at this book and say, oh, that's the white man's book. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. But if you listen up today, you're going to find out this book has been talking about you the entire time. Right. Let's see why this book is so important. Read. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 35. Bring it out. This is our God. Hold up, hold up. No, that, that can't be right. That's a misprint. It got to say, this is everyone's God. This is our God. The word our is possessive. You need to pay attention to that. God is saying he's the God of a particular group of people, not all people. Right. So he says, this is our God, come on. And there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. So he said, no other God on earth can compare to him. Why? Because God is only the God of you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. We don't understand that. God set up all these other things on earth for the other, people, other nations to, wor to worship. Right. For some reason, we think that Islam is for us. That's not for us. That's right. God didn't create no rock for you to worship. Right. He didn't create no moon and stars for you to worship. Right. That's for the other nations to worship. Right. He said he's your God and there's none accounted like him. Come on. He has found out all the way of knowledge. So it says that God in the Bible found out all the ways of knowledge, meaning what? Any knowledge that you need to live on this earth. He said Christ ain't got no color. He said Christ ain't got no color. All right, bro. Hey, come listen to this. You read what, we, what we're saying right now? Listen to so far? The Bible says this is our God and there's none like him. That's right. He said he created all the ways of knowledge and did what? He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant. Bring so it out. says this Bible is the knowledge of the world. Bro, are you listening up? Are you listening up? That's what's wrong with our people. They make statements not knowing that that's something that's been regurgitating them time after time again. Because when we read verses, they get upset when they come out because they never heard it before. Right. So the brother said, Christ has no color. Christ has no color. Let's get the color of Christ. Bring Let's find out today if he's spewing rhetoric or he's spilling the truth of the Bible. We read in the Bible, let's see if Christ, whether or not he has a color. And this has been hidden from you for a reason. Start at verse 1. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it out! The revelation of Jesus Christ. So, revelation, the root word is what? Reveal. So we're about to reveal the true Christ of the Bible. But a lot of you are walking back and forth, to and fro, not caring because why? The earth has pushed a white image of Christ. But when you read in the Bible, it's not white. Why is that? Why did they change the color of Christ in the Bible? You should be questioning all things. You start figuring out these answers, you'll figure out why you're going through the things that you're going through. Right. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Jump to verse 14. So it says, this revelation is going to be doing what? Show to his servants, meaning you. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American. Why does the color of Christ have to be revealed to you? Because it's been hidden all this time. You've been taught to hate yourself. You've been taught the, the true beauty of the earth is the white man's beauty. The white woman's hair. You've been taught these things. That's why the image of Christ is important to you. People say you don't need that for salvation. You do, because why? It's the truth. That's right. You need all the truth for salvation. Right. If you don't know this truth here, what are you going to do? You're going to hate your image. And you're going to take that out upon the people that look like you. Right. Right. So let's get the true image of Christ. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the true image of Christ said what? His head and his hairs were white and wooly. Let's look at this sign here. We're looking at an image of the depiction of Christ right here. And then there's another one that's passed throughout the earth. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The true image of Christ in the Bible says he has white, woolly hair. Sis, who on the earth has woolly hair? We do. We have woolly hair. Hey, why do they push this image on television, on newspapers, on TV and magazines? 
Because of what? They wanted to see that. So that's why the, the, the uh, enemies of, your, of you pushed the doctrine. They didn't have to change anything in the Bible. All they had to do was push images like this and say, it's a white man's book. But when you go in and read it, you're like, hey, it can't be a white man. If the book has the greatest man to walk the earth to be looking like us, this cannot be a white man's book because why? If I teach that to my son, the true image of Christ, he's not going to have a slave mind. He's going to say, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be a slave. I'm meant to rule this world. Yes, right. But our people don't think about these things. So why would they change this? If, you, if they change that, that means what else have they changed in the Bible? That's why you have to read. Did you know what today is, sis? According to the Bible. Genesis 2 and 2. Bring it out! Let's go on the Bible and see this is this is a very special day to the man that created you, that created you. The same color as him. Dark skin. Let's see what he said about today. Bring it out. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 2. Bring it out. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. So what is the seventh day of the week on the calendar? Because we've been taught that the that the first day of the week is Monday. But you look at a calendar like, no, the first day of the week is Sunday. The Bible just said, on the seventh day, meaning the last day of the week, God ended all of his work. Meaning what? When he created everything on earth. Come on. Which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. So the seventh day, the last day of the month, is where God rested. Come on. From all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it. So it says that God blessed the seventh day, which is what? Saturday. And he sanctified. The word sanctified means what? Cleansed. Bring it out. So you look in the Bible, you're not going to find anywhere else that, God, that now God said that the seventh day is dirty. He cleansed it. He's all knowing God. He created heaven and earth. What he say is clean, it's clean. It ain't going to get dirty. Right. So he said the seventh day, the last day, meaning today, Saturday, is the Sabbath of God. That's right. Come on. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So just like our, for our father rested, we should want to rest. We should. And for a reason. Why is that? Because we're in captivity. Sis, did you know that? I say that to a lot of people, they have no idea we're in captivity. Do you, do you own a car? You do? Give me Isaiah 65, 15. You own a car? Even when you own a car or a house, what do you do when it's, when it's yours? You put your name on that thing. I have ownership of this. Let's see what God said is going to happen to his chosen people. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, and verse 15. Bring it out. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. Did you hear that? God said, the name he gave you, you want to leave for a curse. Come on. Unto my chosen. His chosen people are going to leave their name for a curse. So, sis, do you see yourself on this sign here? On this sign over here. Do you see yourself? Would you be a so-called African-American or so-called American black? So-called Haitian, so-called Jamaican? Because that's the name your slave master gave you. If you look on the left side, Judah, Benjamin, Le Levi, on down, that's God, the name God gave you. He said you're going to leave that name for a curse. That curse is what? Slavery. So you're going to leave your true name and we'll come on. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. Now you're being called by another name. Hold up. God said this right here is what happened to his chosen. Hey, do the people over Israel know who they are? Did they lose their name? Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Did they lose their name? They still have their name. They didn't lose it. How do we know it's talking about us? Because I can ask 10 people out here, what's your nationality? I'm going to get at least five different answers. I'm going to get black. I'm going to get African American. I'm going to get some, some craziness. I'm going to get Christianity. I'm going to get, I'm gonna get your, my nationality is Baptist. Well, that's not a nationality. Black man, all of these names have been taught to us to do what? Forget who you truly are. So come on. This is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 17 and verse 4. Bring it out. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Sis, did you hear that? The Bible said you're going to discontinue 
from the heritage that God gave you. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's find out the heritage that God gave you that you discontinued from. Bring it out. Because this right here is that life that's going to come back to you. This is that thing that we're missing our heritage. We want to claim that thing back. Let's see what God said that our women and men would discontinue from. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So one of your heritage that you want to discontinue with was the women wear things that belong to men. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And now men are wearing women's garment. What's that little scrappy now? Little scrappy walking around with a dress on. That's Bible prophecy. God said that men should not wear what belongs to a woman. To a woman. Right. He said that it's just clothing. That, that's a simple mindset. Pants and skirts are not just clothing. It's not just cloth. It shows you the mind state that you are in. When a police officer put on his uniform, he's showing you what? Because he's in authority. That's right. What you wear shows the mindset that you are in. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 25, 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Hey, bro, did you hear that? What you feel about men wearing women's garments? Something wrong with that, right? So what about the other way around? For some, for some reason, we let the other thing go around. What is a, a man's garment that a woman should not wear? Man's garment. What do you have on right now that women wear? Pants. That's a man's garment. A woman should not wear that. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.